Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Griffiths, and it's my pleasure today to welcome you on behalf of Q Associates and Rubrik to this live event. The subject of today's presentation is database protection, specific reference to Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle. Three colleagues from Rubrik join me today, Rob Egley, Stu Davidson, and Julia McMullen. We've opened the question box, so do please submit any specific questions that you would like to ask, and we'll do our best to answer them during the event. At Q Associates, we work with customers every day to optimize the management and protection of data. So I hope you will enjoy the presentation and thank you for joining us. Over to you, Rob. Thanks, Andy, and good morning all. I'm Rob Egley, one of the Rubric Territory Managers. I'm joined by Stu Davidson, a Rubric Systems Engineer. In today's session, we will cover a high level overview of Rubric's database protection. The session will last for around 25 minutes and we'll follow this agenda why database protection is used and, and the relevance of it today and why database protection is hard and how rubric simplifies it a day in the life of a dba using rubrics platform where Stu will jump into the rubric interface we will then pass back to andy to summarize the session before going too much further i just wanted to reiterate what andy said uh, we have juliet man in the chat window so please feel free to submit questions We'll try to get them all, but if we miss any, we'll include them in the follow-up. So to start out, it's good to highlight some key facts and figures about the scale of our customers using database protection. So 1,200 customers use Rubrik to protect SQL Server out of the 2,800 plus customers worldwide we have today. Over 600,000 SQL Server databases are protected by Rubrik in their platform today. Also, SQL Server is the number one object protected in our top 25 accounts globally. And on average, one support call is logged every six months per, six, per a SQL Server customer we have. So these facts and figures show we know what we're doing in this area and, and we drive significant value to our customers. This is then coupled with some really happy customers that invested in Rubrik due to its capabilities in, in, in the uh, database space. There's loads of great comments on this slide, but a couple of my favorites are led by the University of Reading, where the guys said that Rubrik blew us away from, with performing MS SQL restores. The Museum of London then reduced the time spent managing their Oracle platform by 90%. And Berkeley College said, Rubrik has changed the game in database protection. So if we boil it down, the challenges our customers have overcome using Rubrik, it really revolves around three things. Database sprawl, DBAs often manage a couple of hundred databases at any given time, and this number only seems to be rising. This can lead into scheduling nightmares and compliant concerns as it becomes harder to know when new databases are created and where they are. The second point is around data volume. Given the types of applications they support, DBAs are often left to manage terabytes, if not petabytes of data. Databases will continue to grow, and this ultimately leads to every DBA asking themselves, how do I recover my multi-terabyte multi database in minutes? The third point is around operating speed. DBAs often are tied to SLAs for many of their activities, including database clone creation. However, clone creation is a time consuming process that is often dependent on the involvement of the backup and storage admins. This leaves many DBAs looking for ways to free up time to focus on more core DBA related work. Luckily for our customers, Rubrik provides the automation and live mount capabilities they need to address each of these challenges. So how do we do it and what do we offer? If we quickly unpick what we mean by automation and live mount, we enable customers to automatically discover, automatically protect and restore their SQL and Oracle database with near zero RTO. I'm going to leave it there as Stu is now going to take over and show these features in the day of the life of a DBA. Lucy, can you please pass over to Stu? Thanks, uh, thanks Rob, and good morning everybody. Hopefully you can see my uh, my screen. Um, just as a bit of uh, a bit of a disclaimer, um, 
in a previous life, I've worked in uh, in a healthcare setting and also in manufacturing. So I've had responsible or responsibility for multi terabyte uh, SQL databases, hundreds of them serving real time um, patient treatments, and also um, Oracle databases in SAP. But I would I would regard myself as um, as a reluctant DBA. So it was never my preferred choice, but I always ended up being responsible for the backup and restoration of, uh, of SQL. So the point, that, the points that Rob touched on around database sprawl, um, complex manual scripting, backup to disk, having to liaise with um, with storage admins, rings true for me. So hopefully today I'll be able to show you how Rubrik can help you uh, in your role as a DBA, be that a, a dedicated DBA or a reluctant DBA. So what you can see now i'm actually logged into a rubric appliance this is the dashboard so the 10,000 foot view we've done a couple of other seminars on on rubric so i'm not going to go too much into detail here but one of the one of the key things that underpins the uh, the rubric offering is the sla policy so i'm just going to minimize that now so what we're able to do here or what we're after here are three pieces of information really and it's probably much easier for me to show you than it is to to explain so i hit that plus symbol and we're going to create an sla now so this is probably job one as um as a dba and what we're going to do is tell rubric how often we want to take our backup so i'll quickly punch some details in here um if we hit the next window now We've specified our backups. You may have multiple data centers um, and you may want to replicate your backup data for, for high availability. So just by ticking that toggle switch, we can choose a replica rubric cluster and just move the slider along and let's say we want to keep a, repl a, a backup replica for 31 days. Now at the moment up here, we can see that everything is retained on the brick for almost a year which is probably not very likely, and you probably want to leverage um, an additional storage target to archive your data. Now that may be public cloud, it could be on-premise, it could be even be tape. So just by ticking that archiving toggle switch, you get the opportunity to choose a location. I am going to choose um, Azure here as my archive location. And again, just with this simple slider, I'm gonna keep um, 31 days on the rubric appliance. And after 31 days, that data will be archived to the cloud. Alternatively, just with a simple tick box, we've got the ability to do an instant archive. So this is really cool. So the minute the backup data lands on the brick, it will also replicate that to your second data center, say, but also instantly archive that data up to the cloud, giving you three copies of your data. And just to point out as well, again, it's been covered on previous webinars, but all the data that lands on the rubric appliance is immutable. So that means that no um, malware or malicious activity can corrupt or change that data. So in the event of a ransomware attack, you're completely covered and are able to restore back your data. So if I click on the, the next window, that just gives us a summary, the frequency and retention and archiving. So that's actually a really simple demo, but ultimately really powerful. And if I think to, to my roles previously where I had to create hundreds of scripts, make sure that new databases and old databases were removed or added. This replaces um, all that and all the scheduling as well. So the intelligence on the Rubrik platform does all the job scheduling for you and just ensures that the, those SLA targets, uh, frequencies and retentions are met. So on the left hand side here, we've got all the offerings that Rubrik supports. But if I focus on uh, SQL just now, We've created our SLA, so that's how often and where we want to keep our backups. The next job would be to assign workloads to that SLA. So on this view here, this is showing all the Windows hosts that Rubik is aware of and all the SQL um, instances that it's aware of. And we get this information by installing the Rubik, Rubik backup service, which can be installed manually or pushed out using your SCCM or however you deploy your software. Once that's installed, it will discover the SQL instances and then you can assign the SLA to them. And I'm just going to filter onto my demo VM and drill into it. So we can see here, I've got the default SQL server instance, seven databases. And what's um, 
quite a powerful feature is the SLA policies are hierarchical or nested. So if you're familiar with um, group policy uh, in terms of Active Directory, you can apply a policy at the top level and that will filter down to all the hosts. So the, the, the example that I would give might be at a vCenter, you assign an SLA policy um, to every object in vCenter and then by default, it will go and discover all those SQL workloads, all those SQL databases and protect them. So we never leave a VM or a SQL or an Oracle database behind. Um, that's always picked up for you. But you do have some additional flexibility as well. So we can see on the right hand side here, these are the seven databases on my on my demo VM. The policy has been inherited from above. I've chosen to uh, do not protect uh, this particular database. Again, you just hit manage protection there, choose the SLA or, or specify not to protect it. And again, uh, this test for reporting database has got a different SLA. So ultimate flexibility. Just quickly while we're here as well, in terms of the support that Rubrik offers, we'll do standalone SQL uh, databases from SQL 2008 and up, um, Windows failover clusters, fully support uh, availability groups, and additionally Rubrik will set up and manage completely the SQL log shipping, if that's something that you want to do. So that's how we um, protect and discover and automatically discover your SQL workloads. If we jump into one of the databases and actually do some restores. So this is the information card for my live DB. And on the left hand side, it's got information about the host name, the SQL instance name, um, and also importantly, the recovery model. So this is a, a SQL database in the full recovery model, which means that we're able to start doing transaction logs as well. Gives us some information about the oldest and newest snapshot and also the next scheduled snapshot. So on the right hand side, we've got this calendar view and a, a blue dot or a green dot, depending on your monitor, means we've done something on that day. So if I click on the 25th, this, um, this slider bar here, we've got the little dot at the top and this little dot indicates we've had a scheduled snapshot. Now with Rubrik, once we install the Rubrik backup service, we uh, and we take a first backup of a SQL database, let's assume this is a, a huge 10 terabyte SQL database. We will copy all the blocks onto the Rubrik appliance. What's interesting is if, if you enable um, CBT or Rubrik's change block tracking, the next time you take uh, a scheduled snapshot, Rubrik uh, maps those blocks on that Windows host and will only transfer the blocks that have changed since the last full backup. So the, the takeaway from that is if that were a 10 terabyte database, the next time you do a backup, potentially dramatically reduce the amount of traffic going across your network and equally the amount of uh, storage being written onto the Rubrik appliance. But ultimately, the, that can mean uh, significantly shorter backup windows. So I know from in healthcare, one of my customers has a, has a seven terabyte SQL database, which took them some 14 hours to back up. Um, so it started bleeding into the into the working day. Again, Rubrik has gone in, taken that first full backup of a weekend. Now they're doing four hour backups quite happily during the day and the transaction logs as well. So this little, uh, the blue line across the bottom is a point in time restore points. So you can use a slider to, to select the time you want, or you can just type in the, the time there. So if we choose a schedule full, hit this ellipsis here, we've got the restore options. I'm not going to go through all these settings, but the top three, the restore option is your traditional record. Someone's fat thing in that database or it's become severely corrupted. If we choose restore, it will uh, drop the database if it exists and then overwrite it. But ultimately that's going to copy the database over the wire to get you back up and running. Export will, will place the MDF and LDF files onto a SQL server of your choice or a compatible SQL server of your choice in your estate. Um, and this is the this is the cool thing really that, that Rubrik brought to market for, for SQL and, and Oracle workloads and it's this ability to, to mount. So this ex, export and restore are going to copy data over the wire. So if you will, traditional restoration. Um, if I hit mount now and just kick this process off. So Rubrik is offering me the all the SQL instances it knows about on the cluster. I'm going to choose my VM, select next. 
I only have one SQL instance, but if we had multiple, I could choose the instance through restore to. And, um, and let's give it a name and hit mount. So what this is going to do is not move any blocks over the network. What this will do is create uh, an SMB v3 share on the Rubik appliance, go and talk to the SQL instance that I want to do the, the restore on, orchestrate the whole piece and make that database available regardless of size in literally um, a couple of minutes. So while that is running, if I just jump over to SQL Management Studio. So this is SQL installed on my, my demo VM that I've done the restore to. Give it a moment and refresh that. So we have customers who use um, he uses functionality to do things like um, to do things like consistency checks. So if you've got a huge database to, to restore that multi terabyte database, you need the storage, you need the compute. Um, we can mitigate that requirement. Uh, so we've got a load of customers there. We go. It's finally finally mounted. So customers can run uh, consistency checks against this. This is the full read write copy of the database. Um, so I can just browse in here and start to, to view tables, view information. One of the other uh, use cases that customers of uh, customers of mine used, again with a huge database, if someone's deleted a row or, or corrupted some information, but that's only a subset of the entire database, rather than restoring the entire 10 terabytes across the wire to, to pluck out the information you need, simply live mount from the Rubik platform, and uh, your DBA can just export and import those rows or, or affected rows as needed. And in terms of live mount, we're not limited here to, to SQL or, or Oracle for that matter. We can also cover VMware. So another powerful use case is for production systems where you might need to uh, apply Microsoft patches. We, we all um, love Microsoft Patch Tuesday and all the vendors have similar, similar aggressive patch cycles. You can uh, live mount your entire uh, database, web tier, interface tier, onto the Rubrik appliance in a sandbox environment and apply patches uh, to see what the effect is on your systems without doing it in, in on a live production system. So really quite powerful there. I'm going to minimize that now and just jump back to, back to the Rubrik interface. So for the purposes of today's demo, I mean, I've shown you this via the, uh, via the GUI and I've shown you um, Microsoft SQL. The same functionality is available for Oracle DBs. So we can live mount, clone uh, Oracle databases and do the traditional restores. And again, we integrate with, uh, with Arman. Um, I've spoken about, or we've spoken about some of the automation and simplification. And one of the keys to, to Rubik is we kind of eat our own dog food. So everything I've been showing you in here, the user interface actually consumes our own REST API. Um, so everything I'm clicking on here can be fully automated. Um, we've got uh, the website here where you can download the PowerShell Python um, and Go software development kits. And we've also got uh, built a load of integrations with um, popular and, and common tools used for automation. Um, and I can just demo that very quickly now. So ServiceNow, hugely popular service desk. We've got a pre-built integration into Rubrik. So this is our ServiceNow instance. We've got the dashboard showing the information around um, Rubrik backups. If I just drop to the service catalog, select Rubrik. As an example, um, you could actually delegate this out to non-DBAs or DBAs who you don't want to give access to the Rubrik appliance, and they can come in here, choose their SQL workload, choose a database they want to restore, select the restore point from uh, or that they're interested in, give it a name and just order now and service now will go away um, via its secured APIs, talk to Rubik and perform that action for the user. Really quite a powerful use case there. Just in terms of the API as well, hosted on every Rubik um, appliance, we've got our own or the, the internal REST API, which is fully documented. And again, you can um, come here, it's all Authenticate as well. So once I authorize, I can start then to see and build or see the 
the uh, the syntax required to build queries and perform fully automated um, fully automated tasks. And while we're on that, just quickly, um, again, this this uh, use case is from a customer, a healthcare customer that I have. So this is a PowerShell script that um, is taken from that SDK kit. I'm no PowerShell guru, but ultimately here, all we've had to do for the customer is populate these seven fields with the rubric cluster name. We've created a, a secure uh, credential file so they're not using their username and password in the clear. That's important. Um, specify the host name. I'm actually going to execute that. So this will go away and live mount this live DB and give it that name onto the rubric appliance. What they're using this for is they used to do a backup um, to to the disk as a dot back file for for those of you that are familiar with SQL, and then copy that over the network every night to a data warehouse, run various tools to ingest and import that database, and then mine it for information and use things like uh, ClickView and Tableau to report on uh, bed availability, uh, the outpatients waiting time, all that sort of information. The problem they had because the backups were taking so long, and then the copy was taking so long. The information was coming two, three, four days out of date, so almost useless in a, in a clinical context. So with this now, they're able to take backups more aggressively, and they actually run this script, which is mount from the latest point in time. So they run this every 15 minutes uh, based on the transaction log backups. It automatically mounts the database onto their SQL reporting instance, and they then generate clinical dashboards throughout the environment just to, to keep that information, not real time, but certainly a damn sight quicker than it was previously. Um, so yeah, that was the PowerShell information. Um, just one other thing as well in terms of role-based access control. I'm logged into to this Rubik appliance as a full admin, so I've got God rights on this on this appliance, which you probably wouldn't want to delegate. What we do offer is full role-based access control. So although the change is subtle, um, if I log in, this is actually for the purposes of the demo. This is a local account on the Rubik appliance. Um, well, as you can see, the view is slightly different here. And if I jump down to the SQL workloads, I've actually restricted using RBAC um, as to what this local user can see. So for example, if you had a team of DBAs, you can delegate um, to see all databases. You could have a, um, a SQL group that's only allowed to see the SQL workloads and so on and so forth. What's interesting though is the reporting follows that as well. So this user is able to see the SQL databases on my VM. If I drop to the reports, they're also filtered to that as well. So they can get all the information they need, perform live mounts, recover the database themselves um, without having to contact the infrastructure team or the service desk or the storage admin. So that about covers the, um, the demo for today. Lucy, do you want to hand back to Rob? Thanks, Stu. Um, and I hope you uh, you found the, uh, the the demo useful there, and, and also the overview um, of the uh, the key features that that make up Rubrics database platform. Um, we we obviously we work with Q um, in conjunction with this session. Um, so if there is any questions that want to be directed to um, to the Q team, um, then um, then then please do that, or feel free to reach out to to Rubric directly. Um, I'll now pass on to Andy to, to tie up the session um, and uh, take us through to the end. So over to you, Andy. Lovely. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob, there. And also thank you to Stu for, uh, for uh, that demonstration. That was great. That was really fabulous. Thank you. So we, we've only had time for a quick overview uh, today of Rubric Database Protection, but Q Associates um, are proud to be recognised by Rubric in the UK as their leading um, technical and support services specialist. So any further questions you may have, or if you'd just like to find out more, there's plenty of information available. Do please get in touch via your usual Q contact uh, or email us at rubric at qassociates.co.uk, as, as Rob said there. Um, looking forward to our next event, that's in two weeks' time, on Thursday the 9th of July, uh, again at 9.30 in the morning, when we'll be looking at Microsoft 365 Backup and exploring the innovation and value that Rubrik can bring to help protect your 365 data.
This event has been recorded uh, and will be published later today on the Q Associates YouTube channel. That's Q Associates UK. And it will also be available on the Q website um, within the next 24 hours. So thank you all for joining today's event. I do hope you found it valuable and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.